Super excited to have Dr. Sandy Morgan come tonight. Uh, Jeannie and I have been able to attend a couple of events and heard her speak and um, about a year ago said, I really would love to have you come. Her and her husband, Jean, are part of our Barnabas community and just want you to hear her voice. I want to thank her and we're happy to have Kim with us here and we've gifted you with this book, Ending Human Trafficking. I want to encourage you, if you didn't get one, be sure to take one and share it. A handbook of strategies for, of strategies for the church today. Sandy directs the um, the center. I, I read it off the back of her book. Sandy directs the center, uh, Global Center for Women and Justice at Vanguard University. And there's a table outside with information on what that's all about. But what I love about her spirit of collaboration, her spirit of education, and the belief that we can actually do something to make a difference. So Sandy, come and challenge us tonight. Welcome, Dr. Sandy Morgan. Thank you. I had a moment in the outside area today. I love teaching. I love preparing the next generation. Some of my students are Homeland Security supervisors in Washington, DC. They are probation officers in Central California. They are social workers taking care of our children who have been exploited. That's my job and I love it. And tonight, a young woman who's going to be making a trip to visit Vanguard to become one of my future students asked me to autograph her book and I put my office number inside. That is a moment. Thank you for sharing about moments. Um, writing this book with my friend Kim, wave Kim, there's Kim, has been an exceptional journey because for years I have struggled with how do we equip the church? Because what I have come to understand, I started working on human trafficking before you had language for it. I was a night nurse in a pediatric ward in Central California and at 2 a.m., I admitted a 14-year-old boy being sold by family members for their substance use disorder. I didn't have any language, but I had Jesus, and I always felt that my wonderful um, evaluations on how I handled my nursing in that hospital came because Holy Spirit gave me wisdom in the moment to touch that little boy's life. But I believe that those kinds of tragedies are an opportunity for the church to show up and be salt and light. And sometimes we forget that that's what Jesus told us we are, salt and light. Just to make sure you're all still awake, will you say that out loud? Salt and light. That was pretty good. This side was louder than this side, though. Let's try it one more time. Salt and light. And that is not like, well, if I'm called. This is how Jesus described you. And when there is a tragedy, it is imperative that you show up with God's love. Um, here's what the tragedy of human trafficking is all about. It is about compelling another person to work or provide a commercial sex act through the use of force, fraud, or, or coercion. Now that's legal terminology that is pages long, and you can thank me for putting it on one slide. <laughs> 40 million people enslaved around the world today, and last year a new report upgraded that to 50 million. 
Now that's an extrapolation. That's a guess. Victims aren't, please count me, do a census. We have to go and find them. 22% are victims of commercial sexual exploitation. And it is important, how many of you live right here in California? All right, keep your hands up, because you have a chance to, you have an opportunity to be salt and light. There is a movement to legalize prostitution in California. You can put your hands down now. I want you to be equipped and ready with the knowledge that you need to combat that in your community. It's an opportunity for you to be light, to be salt in that conversation. This area of human trafficking is a tragedy that impacts one out uh, impacts children. One out of four human trafficking victims are children. And when I start teaching you about what they're being used for, you're going to have a hard time going grocery shopping. I promise we'll get there. So let me move to my next slide. I love this clock, Russ. I have to learn how to do that on my iPad because I can see the time just ticking away, so I'll quit talking about that. Um, when I lived in Greece, my husband, Wave, over here, um, also carried all those books in for you tonight. Yeah, that's right. We lived in Greece as missionaries for 10 years, and we went to the island of Crete, went to Nosos Palace, 3,000-year-old population, and I took this picture of a pithati. Now, if you want to learn to speak a little Greek, um, I can't stand still. I just, I'm sorry. All right, so I, this pithati was in the king's palace, in the pantry, and it is so big, I could stand up inside of it. Well, you, I know, I'm, not, I'm vertically challenged, so it's not like it's, Jean couldn't stand up inside of it, but they didn't have cranes, they didn't have carts, and the pantry was down a steep set of stairs, and this is how they would bring the olive oil and the grain and whatever harvest down into the pantry. So the people, though, this might be why I liked it, were about my size. And how do we get um, hundreds of kilos of olives down the stairs. Brilliant. They created handles from the bottom to the top, and they were baked into the jar. Now, if you can imagine being on stairs and everybody grabs a handle, 10 people, you can move this jar. You can get it where it needs to go. Can one person do it? No way. Two or three? Probably not. Everybody can do something. And when people talk to me, and if you want to learn more about the Global Center, yes, we've got stuff out there. People talk to me about human trafficking. And usually, when I'm at church, that means that within about three or four minutes, they're going to say, I just want to show them God's love. I just want, and sometimes they even say, I just want to love on these victims. And I'm the nurse in me says, you cannot touch them. They've been touched without their permission. So none of that. But this idea of showing God's love and being very practical. I was a charge nurse. I was an operating room nurse. I had a six foot three Vietnam vet surgeon that worked for me. Um, just so you know what Jean lives with. So 
I was reading in Philippians, and Paul really helped me. And I want you to read this with me. I hope everybody can see a screen. This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now, we're going to focus on a few words in this, and I was a youth pastor at once when we were pastoring, and I love teaching memory verses. I hope when you get in your car tonight, and I know I'm the only thing between you and that door, um, that this verse will be echoing in your heart and mind. So in this verse, when we start talking about what does love look like when we're working in human trafficking, anytime we're going to show God's love, Paul says that you need knowledge and depth of insight. Knowledge, well, I'm a teacher. I can do that. I've got resources. At the end of the sl slides, I'll show you some of the resources we have. But this is not optional. You need knowledge and insight. You've got to have training. I have been um, often a little frustrated when people say, well, but God told me to do this. Well, God may have called you to be a physician, but you still had to get a license to practice medicine. I still had to take physiology and all kinds of classes to become a nurse. And so knowledge and insight is part of the process, and it is scriptural. We need more than passion. And when we have knowledge and insight, that produces discernment, discernment, wisdom, then you can tell. You, you have the ability to actually make good decisions, make good choices. Because what you're supposed to discern, and these words are in bold, what is best, what may be pure, and blameless for the day of Christ. Now, anybody know what the day of Christ is? Theology majors, anybody, pastors? Judgment, judgment. There will be a test. Remember the test of true religion, all those kinds of things. So you want to be doing what is best, pure, and blameless. Back when I was the Orange County Federal Task Force Administrator, they took us all to Washington, D.C. Uh, for five days for more knowledge and insight and training. And they split our groups up. There were a 1,000 of us from all over the U.S. This is 2010. And our lunchtime table topic was, what is your biggest community engagement challenge? The guys from Texas joined Orange County, and the sergeant kicked his sh chair back, kind of like they do on TV, and he said, ah, the wacko church people. And my, my team, my guys, they all looked over at me to see what I was going to say. And finally, the, um, the lieutenant said, she's one of them. <laughs> and I said, actually? They're kind of a problem for me, too. They come to my office, which is 8 by 10, and bring me cases of half-gallon shampoo jugs. OK, we're going to talk about that. Um, that's not best, pure, or blameless. So if the community doesn't see you as effective, as valuable, but see you um, and, and accuse you, um, do we need to go back and check on our knowledge? And I'm going to 
go through a little quicker now because Ambassador Richmond wrote the forward for the book and you've got the book so you can read this. But he has a theory that churches have a role in ending human trafficking that is um, helpful for those in government. And when you look at this from the perspective of love that is, chooses the path of knowledge and insight and develops wisdom that is best, pure, and blameless, then you want to look at the fruit of righteousness. I loved the, um, the welding class. I want, oh, it disappeared. I want the you I want to take welding. Sherry, can I do welding? I want a hundred dollars an hour. My boss is in the room somewhere. Um, yeah, there you go, Dr. Renee. Um, I'm gonna get welding lessons. Righteousness that comes through Christ. And here's the most important and wish I had the red button on here to the glory and praise of God, because back to when I said, this tragedy is an opportunity for us to be salt and light. It is an opportunity for us to show up and show people Christ's love. When I think about being blameless, I don't want someone to say, Sandy Morgan was here. Well, wacko crazy Sandy was here. I want them to say that she brought God's love here in a way that transformed lives. Now, that's the foundation. That is the foundation for the challenge and the Russ met with me. He gave me an assignment. I am supposed to challenge, educate, and inspire you in the next 13 minutes. So I've got the challenge down. Do you feel challenged? Okay, good. Here's going to come the education, and I'm going to just trust the Holy Spirit to inspire you. So if you're going to work in our anti-human trafficking world, whether you are doing, and I, I did, I've been to Dominican, this summer, I've worked on anti-human trafficking in Dominican Republic, in Spain, in Greece, and recently in Bolivia. Everyone uses this model of partnership prevention, protection, prosecution, and policy. This is like standard. It's like if you're going to prepare to get your welding license, there are certain things you have to know. So you may want to call it something else, but this is what everybody else is calling it. All the reports, all of the measurements, and you have to be able, who was it? Oh, Johnny, you were talking about that. And Johnny, I want to go to Tajikistan, just saying. Um, this is the standard. This is, oh, there's Johnny. Yeah, he's going to, I'm going to fill out your form. Um, these are the areas. Now, if I could figure out, I'm not a graphic artist, um, if I could figure out how to put these on my pithati, that big jug, so that you could find your handle, this is where you have to figure out what your part, what do you need to have knowledge and insight about to be part of the solution? Are you, and this is where I do believe Barnabas does thrive, is the collaboration, coming alongside. Well, how do you begin to collaborate um, in multi-agencies, not individual organizations? There is no single organizations. Somebody asked me, what organizations do you work with? I work with hundreds of organizations globally. Um, 
I want them to learn how to work together better and function from a perspective of abundance instead of scarcity. Of It's not a zero-sum game. It's if you bring uh, what you're really good at and I bring what I'm good at, we are going to actually have a bigger pie. In prevention, prevention is probably my favorite thing and I do believe that the church is uniquely positioned to do prevention. Um, protection, those who are providing aftercare for victims, for survivors, do you know we don't have one bed in Orange County for male victims of commercial sexual exploitation of children, child sex trafficking. We don't have one. This tragedy is an opportunity for somebody to show up. Prosecution. Now, I know there's a few law enforcement folks in the room, but most of you should not go out doing your own investigations. Uh, when I was the task force, administrator, I got a call from the FBI because students from another Christian college were doing their own um, investigations in massage parlors. It was not Vanguard. And I had to go to that school and tell their administration that next weekend, if your students show up, we are arresting them. In other situations, people who were not qualified to do these things um, blew up major investigations, costing, I thought at the time I remember saying tens of thousands of dollars, and then I found out it was, it was a couple hundred thousand dollars in your tax dollars, by the way. And the perpetrators got away and, well, never mind. So let's talk about prevention, because I believe that the biblical model for prevention has been with us a long time. The very first example of prevention is in 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. The widow comes to the prophet and says, my creditors are taking my two sons as slaves. This is happening right now lots of places. So debt bondage. And so, and really to your point about the women in community development, that's why I want to go. Um, Asset-based community development. I can teach on this for two hours. Are you guys okay if we, oh no, Russ is like, no, that timer's going. Um, Asset-based community development, and God was doing it already. The prophet did not say, oh, can you bring the boys? We're going to do a little video, play some music, and take an offering on Sunday. He asked her, what do you have? And she said, a little oil in a flask, just enough for her lamp, not even enough to make a meal. And remember, I lived in Greece. I know how to cook with olive oil. actually wrote a Greek cookbook. But then she gets, he tells her to go and borrow empty jars. This is such a good story. And then she's obedient. She does it. They go in. You know the story. She starts pouring. They're all full. Now she's an olive oil entrepreneur, which is the only way a widow can support her sons. Asset-based community development. Prevention, health care, the basic principles of prevention, the public health model, has again three Ps. The first one, you know she's going to get cavities if your grandparents do not give your grandbaby candy because they're going to get cavities. So we know that and we devise a way to protect. Toothbrushes, got it? How many of you can still hear your mother as you're leaving for school saying, Sandy, did you brush your teeth? Yes, I did. And you don't do it once. You do it every single day. And in California, we have prevention curriculum legislated. 
once in middle school for three days, an hour a day, and once in high school for three days, an hour a day, and I want to take a boatload of toothbrushes to Sacramento and tell them that you can brush your teeth this week and again in two years. Because prevention, that's why church is such a great place to do prevention. Every Sunday school department, every youth group, every college group, they should be doing prevention. Okay. On internet safety. And I've got like a dozen um, podcast interviews. I have um, YouTube videos. We have a conference coming up March 1st and 2nd. It's all about how do we protect our kids. The last thing I want to talk to you about is partnership. And this is what you do really well in the way that Kim and I and our other co-author organized the book. This is an entire section about collaboration. And here's how collaboration looks. Instead of going in your closet and finding all the canned goods that are about to expire, or the half gallons of shampoo, um, you actually ask us, what do we need? And then you sh evaluate what your expertise and your resources are. And that's how you show up in partnership. At Vanguard, we had expertise in conference planning, and now we've been doing the Insure Justice Conference for 17 years. We have facilities and volunteers, and our task force needed community engagement, so that's what we did. I lied. There is one more section, because this really has a lot to do with the area of um, how to do best, pure, and blameless. And that's having policies. There's a whole chapter. Please read this part. Policy creates, um, de creates a process that develops patterns of ethical practices to build trust and operationalize value for human dignity. And I want our community to trust your church. So you have to have policies, child protection policies. Um, it's really complicated for me when you have chocolate that's made by slave labor. 80% of the chocolate in America is tainted by child labor. Labor trafficking is real. I have a podcast about that. Um, if you're a corporate leader, you can use this app to check your supply chains. These are ways for you to get the knowledge and insight you need for best, pure, and blameless. Everybody say best, pure, and blameless. See, they're still awake, Russ. The last chapter, though, is about prayer. And when John Richmond wrote the forward to the book, he had been a DOJ prosecutor, and he told the story of a survivor who told him that the only thing her traffickers could not take away from her was her ability to pray. And of course she prayed for her suffering to end, but here's what she prayed for as well, that people would be more than informed and have merely distant compassion. She prayed they would take smart, strategic action. And that's what I want to call you to. I want to call you to be committed to study the issues so that when you speak up on it, when you do something, you say the right things that are best, pure, and blameless. And you do things that don't have unintended consequences. I want to invite you to grow your knowledge and depth of insight. I was so excited that Russ wanted every family to go home with a copy of this book. It's, gonna, it's not novel reading. 
it's going to take a little time. I've got an outline, but if you want to do a book club, um, Kim and I can help you with that. We have the Ending Human Trafficking podcast, over 300 episodes. We have all kinds of opportunities for engaging at Vanguard in our classes. And coming up in just two and a half weeks, Ambassador Richmond is going to be with us um, for our annual gala, Amplify, where we want to engage our community, every person, every action. And if you're already going to go to Europe or something in September, um, March 1st and 2nd, our Insure Justice Conference will be on keeping our children safe online. And closing, I want you to keep thinking about how your love may abound with knowledge and insight for best, pure, and blameless to the day of Christ for his righteousness to bring glory to God. Thank you. I have no more slides, so we're good. Thanks. Thank you, Sandy. I, man, I hope you're encouraged and challenged, because every one of us in this room can respond to that call. <laughs> I encourage you. Stop by the table. Uh, we've attended the Amplify event in the past, and we want to really encourage you to attend that in a couple weeks, and, and take the book, read the book, share the book. Thank you for just a great night. John, I'd love to have you come. Um, my prayer tonight is that Tonight, God spoke to you in some way. Uh, you may not know clearly what that is until you drive it home in a few minutes, but take some time. Look at the book. Think through some of the presentations. In a few weeks, we'll have the presentations online. You can watch them again. You can share them. If you're a guest here and you want to know more about Barnabas, I'll be sending you an email in the next couple days and invite you to consider joining us. If you have questions or need help connecting with any of these organizations, we'd love to help you connect. But um, again, don't, don't walk out of here and say, wow, that's, that's really good. Walk out saying, okay, what, what, what am I called to? What's my response to what's happening in, in my world? God, God has something for you. Thanks for being with us. I'd like to ask John. John is the chairman of the Barnabas Board. I'd love to have him just close our time. Let's stand as we close. Great having you here tonight. Lord, we're just so grateful for all of what we heard Lord, as we pause to hear about what you want us to, get to engage in, we think about all the things that we heard, and we think, well, wow, there's a lot of things that were given to us tonight on our plate. Help us search our heart, Lord. Help us to identify maybe one or two things, maybe more, that we need to get engaged with. If we're new here to the Barnabas Group, we ask you to join us. And Lord, we just... Uh, as as we leave tonight, we know that uh, because of you, uh, we can be um, we can be ushered into your presence, and we can rely on you, and know that you, Lord, are the center of all of what we do. In Jesus' name, Amen.